Okay, I've got myself involved in a project where I need to determine speeds, feeds, and settings for an operation called surfacing. This particular part here will be done with a ball end mill, two flute ball end mill, and ultimately when it's done I'm going to slice it in half and turn it round so we're going to have two identical halves uh, with protrusions and dimples. Now the way this is going to be done I can switch over to the actual manufacturing model on this and show you how it's going to be done. The ball end mill is going to walk back and forth on this piece. And sculpt this out of a solid block. Like that. Now you would be surprised how many things around you were done this way. When there's no other way to machine a part, what you do is you take something with an extremely small radius on the nose and you just track it back and forth until the shape ultimately comes out. Then you have a punch or an electrode or a die or whatever and then you transfer that shape to something uh, more robust and away you go. Now this is going really slow. That's actually probably about cut speed. It's going to be about that fast. Let me turn it up so you can see what's going on here. It will walk down in the features, walk over top of the features. And the only driving parameter here is if you're going to use a ball, make sure that the radius on the tip of your cutter is smaller than any radius on the part where the machine will just ignore that area and you're going to have to go in and isolate other zones when you're done. Isn't that cool? It's like the surface of the moon. Look at that. That is approximately 15,000 lines of code and the accuracy of this part is set to about 15,000 on the step over. 15 thousandths of an inch on the step over. So I can expect uh, some of these radius features to be less than ideal. A 15,000th step over is pretty aggressive and tolerance wise if you wanted to run this up to 30, 40, 50,000 lines of code that probably would not be a problem but it would take forever to run it. So just to have a starting point on this particular part start it off with 15. Let's go out and run it. Gonna run it on a piece of plastic Hope you enjoy it.
And to clean up the two halves, we're going to set up a pressure turn operation here. We're going to put in, an, I call it a back plate or an anvil. It's got a shoulder on it so it doesn't push into the jaws. And there's the parts with the corners cut off in the bandsaw and a drive cap. I do use this setup for other operations on other parts. So I did not want to reduce the diameter of the drive cap that's attached to the live center. I can only get so far into this part and then the back side of the insert holder that I'm using started to come in contact with that drive center. And it was just a little bit too much left to clean up. Decided to cheat a little bit, take some of the drive center off, but ultimately you'll see me change over to a high speed tool here that has a little more projection and would cut on both sides like a threading tool just to give myself a little bit more space. It is not dimensionally critical, so I'm going to line it up by eye. It's easy to do. Just squat down and take a look and see how close it is to center. Lock it off and take a cut. I'm going to make my initial pass to see if I can clean it up. Turn the machine off. Check for saw cut marks. There they are right there. So I'm going to back the tool out just about a quarter of an inch and make little plunge cuts with that tool until it's a continuous cut. I'll record the number. Reset to the beginning of the part, dial in to that number, knowing that it's going to clean up, and across we go. Now I am uh, very aware of the chips here, and when I pull off, it is a lot slower than it looks. And when we're done, this is what we got. Tens of thousands of lines of code, and some of it does have to be tweaked, some of the step over and some of the path. You can see some chatter around the radiuses, but that is exactly why I did this. Dial it in, make it perfect. Thanks for watching.